in the sanctuary. More things are wrought by prayer than this world could ever imagine. We are praying for the Fletcher family. We are praying for the Van Leer family. We are praying for the Cervantes family. And we are praying for every one of you. Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we bless you. We can't make it through here without you. Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you for being a keeper during these trying times. Lord, we, we just need you. Lord, you are the answer to every problem that we face, oh God. Lord, for those who need healing, Lord, send the word, Lord. Touch them right where they are, God. You showed us by your example. Even if our very shadow pass across them, Lord, they can be delivered. Lord, come in this worship, this worship and set somebody free. Help us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. Lord, we need you today. Father, we worship you today. Father, we bless you. Lord, use us. Continue to use us for your glory. Lord, continue to work on us, Lord. Lord, we know that time is drawing near. Lord, you said you would come and make up your jewel. Father, to those that are struggling, Lord, to that recent releasee who don't see hope, help them to know that you are the answer. To someone that is about to give up, Lord, who is contemplating suicide, Lord, send them help and help them know there is an answer. Father, send your spirit, oh God. Lord, you said in your word, in the last days you would pour out your spirit among all flesh. Lord, help us to be ready to help them. Lord, you are soon to return, and we don't want to miss that when you come. We thank you, we praise you, and we magnify you, and we give you glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
what I used to be. Be old, all things are new. Ha <laughs> Y'all done got me messing up. I like the tenor part. Behold, all things are new. I like that. God needs some men in this church. He needs some people that's not messed up about their pronoun. You're not concerned about what bathroom you got to use. You're a man. I want all the men in this church to just stand up. Every man, if you're not confused about your pronouns, stand up. Now I want everybody to sit down, give these men an applause. I thank God for the brothers. If there's ever a place you should find a real man, it's in the church. Come on, somebody. Because we know where we're supposed to be. I don't know why I said that. I think just singing with the choir, I'm not what I want to be, but I'm not. What I used to be, behold, all things are new. Brother, that's the brother's part. Come on, somebody. The ladies, I'm not what I want to be. But the brothers, behold, they, they carry it. They, the brothers are the foundation. And I'm just grateful to God, amen, for, to have. I don't have a lot of friends, but the brothers I have that are friends are men. I ain't going to try to get refuge in trouble, but I ain't got a lot of gay friends. I know gay people, but my brother friends are men. Iron shopping's iron. Lord, I done went off preaching on something crazy. I'm grateful to God to be here today. Amen. It's always a good blessing to come home. God is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. I thank God for all of you. I love you so much. I love you so much. I would never stop loving you. Come on, somebody. I don't care. You know, y'all might talk about me when I'm not with you. I know you do. I know you do. He's my brother. He's not my friend. So are you, so are you, so are you, so are you. But I know you talk about me behind my back. I know you do. I know you're good. I love him so much. He's the kind of fella that'll just show up at your house and don't even call. I'm like, can I at least vacuum? <laughs> but he's my brother. I love him so much. So much. He got his lessons from Bishop Keith. You answer the door, Bishop and Lady Keith at your door. You're like, oh, Jesus. Uh, but it's a blessing, and I thank God to be a part of this ministry. What a miracle this is. Do y'all understand what a miracle is? A miracle is not a blessing. You're blessed every day. But a miracle is when something awesome happens. I use the word awesome, very limited, very limited. 
you know, if my kids got a good grade in school, I didn't say that was awesome. You should have done that. <laughs> if I got a raise at work, hey, it wasn't awesome. I did my job. But something that is awesome, that implies awe-inspiring, where you go, wow, that's a miracle. Oh, come on, somebody. Has anybody here ever had a wow moment in your life? That's a miracle. If you got a miracle ever, you bless. <laughs> ah, let me get to the word and start preaching, but I'll stop preaching. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And sleepless nights. But when I... When I look around and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road, but I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Though my weary eye may not see, so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I won't complain. The Lord, he's good to me. He He's so good to me, more than this whole world could ever be. He's been good to me. He tries all of my tears away, turn my midnight in today so I'll just say thank you Lord I won't complain one more time the Lord's been so good to me he he he's so good to me more than this whole world could ever be. He's been good to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He tries all of my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Come on, can you tell him? Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him. Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him. Thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. He's been. He's been, he's been 
too good to me. He, he, he set me free. So I just say, come on, I just say, I won't complain. Hallelujah. 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 If you're not a complainer, of praise it. If you don't have a complaint, tell him thank you. If you don't have a complaint, give him worship. If you don't have a complaint, lift your hand. If you don't. Come on, come on, come on. I'm not a complainer. I'm a praiser. I'm a praise him with tears in my eyes. I'm a praise him with a burden on my shoulder. Ah! Hey! Hey! Come on and give him a praise. Come on and give him a praise. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, when it comes to Jesus, I got nothing to complain about. Hey, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Find somebody else. Say, hey, neighbor, when it comes to Jesus, I have nothing to complain about. Woo! 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 Hallelujah. 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 Just one more time, shout out loud. I have nothing to complain about. Let's go to the word of God. Let's go to the word of God. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. We're going to start reading at verse number 16. And here's what the Bible says. Look at this. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, For the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind 
to set at liberty them that are bruised. Two, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And when he had closed the book, he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of them that were in the synagogue was fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Have your way in us. Work in us. Make us what you want us to be. God, as your representative for today, I rebuke every demonic spirit from every house, from every family, from every person, God. If you don't want them to go through it, Jesus, take it away. Ah, God, but we know that what you want us to go through will make us. It will, it's going to build us. It, it's going to strengthen us and make us holy. But, devil, you have no authority. You have no right you have no access. In the name of Jesus, we apply the blood to our doorposts. Oh, God, right now, in Jesus' name, have your way. Send your word like a hammer that breaks rocks into pieces and we'll praise you forever. In Jesus' name, tell the Lord thank you. I'm not going to read it all again, but we're going to take our subject from verse number 18 to verse number 19. Yeah, I ain't got no mask on, so I can, well, not all, well, most of y'all don't. I can tell if you're smiling by your eyes. So look at your neighbor and give him a big smile. If you have no teeth, what you going to do? You just going to gum them and say, neighbor, respect the anointing. Respect the anointing. Now look at somebody else and smile at them too. I hope you brush your teeth because, you know, some of you have something hanging out, but smile at them anyway and say, I respect my anointing. My anointing. If you are a believer in Christ, you anoint it. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You're anointed. It comes automatically through the Holy Ghost. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost is to connect you to God. Oh, come on, somebody. He's father in creation, son in redemption, and Holy Ghost in the church. I'm sorry to say this. I think this might be over some of y'all's head. Because you don't pray. You don't read your Bible. You just come to church. And when you come, you're late. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't come to prayer meeting. You don't come to Bible study. When I was coming up on 40th and Garland, I couldn't do anything unless I came to prayer meeting. Oh, come on, somebody. But nowadays, doing something ain't that important. 
We just want to be seen in church. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all mad at me yet? Well, you might be once this is over. It don't mean anything to you because you ain't saved. Oh, I told you. I told you. Am I in trouble yet? You're the one sitting in the big chair. All right. You ain't saved if it means nothing to you. You want to live holy. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, we struggle. You know, somebody wrote me on something on Facebook, said, you know, why all these Christians are still doing the same thing everybody else does? Being saved doesn't mean you're perfect. Being saved means that you have faith in God. I told you before, and I'm going to tell you again. Can I get a little more volume? It is, it is different to believe in God than to believe God. That's a whole different deal there. People believe in God. Oh, God exists. He's somewhere in the atmosphere. But when I believe in God, when, 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 when I believe God, I believe he's with me. Oh, come on, somebody. Lo, I'm with you. Ah, oh, when always. You know why I made it here safe today? Because God is with me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about church people. We live life just like everybody else. Life happens. Come on, somebody. It happens to everybody. A couple of weeks ago, I woke up on Sunday morning ready to go to church, but my stomach said, no, no, no. And I found my face in the spot of the toilet you don't want your face to be. Come on, somebody. All day. This, I'm telling you, one week. One week. The next day, I had to deal with the Social Security Administration. Oh, come on, somebody. The next day, my cat ran away. <laughs> oh, he came back. He came back. The next day, Bubba went home. He had been home for two months, and he went home. Next day, we had a windstorm and lost power for four days in one week. But let me tell you what happened. Bubba made it safe. Come on, somebody. The power came back on. Nike came back. Come on, somebody. Social Security Administration said, we'll, we'll give you another consideration. And my face wasn't where it wasn't supposed to be. Come on, somebody. Life happens. You mad at God. Because life happens. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But let me tell you something about the anointing. Father in creation, Son in redemption, Holy Ghost in the church. When a preacher preaches to you, he's giving you CNN. He's giving you world news. I ain't even going to say Fox. Come on, somebody. He's giving you CNN. He's giving you what's happening around the world. But local news tells you 
what's happening around you. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to give you local news. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here because I feel like preaching and I'm going to need some help. Come on, somebody. Y'all praying with me? The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to give you local news. When you're on your bed at night and you've been crying all night, oh, come on, somebody. You're driving and you're worried. You at the job and can't even concentrate. That's when you need some local news. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. You don't need a sermon. You need a message. You need a ream of word from the Lord. Speak to my heart. Speak to my, speak to me, Jesus. Come on, just tell him, speak to me. I'm not saying speak to my wife. I'm not saying speak to my children. Don't even speak to my neighbors. Speak to me. I need a word. I need a word because this burden is heavy. I need a word because I can't see my way. You said you ordered my steps, so tell me where to go. Local news. Tell God, speak to me. Jesus. Was appointed to be our savior. He was appointed to be our deliverer. He was appointed to take our place. Oh, come on, somebody. God looked at Jesus and asked Jesus, what he thought about you. Oh, come on, somebody. Can I just be a little theological experimentive? And he asked Jesus what he thought about you. You know what Jesus said? They need some blood. Oh, come on, somebody. If they just had some blood. Hmm. That's why he came. That's why he died. That's why he rose again. I don't know if this is true or not, but there are some biblical uh, archaeologists, people who study the Bible land. Where Jesus died is where they found the Ark of the Covenant. Where Jesus died is where they found Noah's Ark. And the blood dripped. Oh, come on, somebody. All through time. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's why the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It, 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 it went everywhere I needed it to go. It went to the highest mountain. Flow to the lowest valley. Jesus is preaching from the book of Isaiah. And he was, he had to have some authority because you just couldn't get up and read the scripture. Oh, come on, somebody. He had to at least be a deacon, a minister, an elder. A bishop, come on somebody. He had to have some authority for the minister to bring him the word. And he opened it up and said, the spirit of the Lord God is a 
upon me. Because he's anointed me. Let me tell you something about the anointing. It ain't free. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Jesus was always born to be Jesus. But there were a lot of Jesuses during his times, like Steve or John or Bob or Michael. Come on, somebody. It was just the name. Come on, somebody. But for Jesus to work in his anointing, he had to go through some things first. Can I tell you what they are? First thing he had to do was mature. Oh, come on, somebody. Because the night he was born, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, he was still Jesus. But he wasn't mature. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He had to grow up. <laughs> he had to go to school. He had to listen to his daddy. You sit down there, boy. Let me show you how to frame this wall. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Huh? He already knew it. <laughs> he already knew how to frame walls. He already knew how to build houses. He already knew, but he had to become obedient. Come on, somebody. He had to become obedient. Y'all didn't see Jesus working no miracles as a child. The only thing y'all saw him do was be in the synagogue and be able to talk a man with the teachers. He wasn't working no miracles. He was just so, and he was intelligent. Oh, come on, somebody. So he had to mature. Some of y'all can't use your anointing because you're not mature enough. You use your anointing to pray against people. Lord, I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe somebody on Facebook. We on Facebook Live right now? Ain't nobody in here, right? Come on, somebody. They did you wrong, and you waiting. You waiting for something to happen. And when something bad happens, you're like, thank you, Jesus. That's not anointed. Oh, y'all don't hear me. So he had to mature before he could use it. Because if you wasn't mature, you will be zapping everybody. Zap, 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 zap. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You got to learn to be like Superman. If Superman was Clint, was it uh, Clark, Clark Kent, and he shook your hand, he couldn't shake your hand like Superman. He had to shake your hand like Clark Kent. Come on, somebody. But when he became Superman, see, you're not always under the spirit, but when you are, you become super. You can do supernatural stuff. Let me tell you. He says, eyes haven't seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for them that love them, but the Spirit of God has revealed them. When you're walking in the flesh, you can't see what God Oh, come on, somebody. You can only see what's there. But God is trying to show you something that is not seen in the flesh. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God is trying to show you the family that you imagine. The business. Oh, come on, somebody. The job. The healing. That nobody else sees. God is trying to show it to you. But you're too busy walking around like Clark Kent. When God wants you to be in the spirit. Second thing had to happen. 
Jesus had to be baptized. <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He had to be baptized. Folk walking around here talking about they anointed and never been. <laughs> How can you be anointed and not be baptized? I'm not talking about just in water. Yeah, you need that because Jesus got that. But you also got to be baptized in the spirit. I told you that Jesus was a common name. If you lived in Old Testament time, it was Yahshua, a Joshua. If you live in Mexico, it's Jesus. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But for Jesus to be Jesus, Jesus. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He had to first be baptized. Now look at this. I, I, I just saw it this morning. He was baptized by John. And what did John baptize? He baptized with the baptism of what? What did Jesus have to repent for? <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But when he went down, he went down for me. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. He repented for me because he chose. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. So he knew I couldn't come to God all messed up and dirty. So I had to repent before I even was born. He was. He was baptized for me. That's why my past, present, future sins are already forgiven. Because Jesus already told God, I'm sorry. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. Jesus already told God, forgive him, Lord. Second thing, he had to be baptized. He had to be filled with the Holy Ghost before he could be Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> he couldn't do nothing for me until he was anointed. Oh, come on, somebody. He couldn't raise nobody from the dead. Huh? He couldn't, he couldn't stop no woman with an issue of blood. Until he was baptized to become Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> my Jesus, my Savior, my Deliverer, my Waymaker, my Door Opener. If you want to ask me how I got it, I'm going to say Jesus did it. What Jesus was it? It was Jesus, Jesus. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He was the real Jesus. Third thing Jesus had to do, he had to be tempted. Mm. Let me back up. He had to fast. Come on, somebody. You don't fast for a car. You don't fast for a job. Stop doing that. You don't fast for a house. You fast to seek God. That's when you get on your face and you let your stomach growl. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And the devil, you don't even like fried chicken, but the devil is like, mm, mm. you need some KFC, baby. Come on, somebody. But I need a word from the Lord. 
so I'm going to stay on my face. Come on, somebody. Now look at this. I don't know if y'all ever looked at it. Satan didn't tempt him until the fast was over. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. Satan found him hungry. And he said, if you be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. You know what? It was legal for him to do so because the fast was over. He could have spoke to those stones and made them roadhouse biscuits with butter. Come on, somebody. Little honey on them. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Huh? The fast was over. He, he had authority in all the earth. He could speak things that are not as though they were. He could have changed those stones. And some cinnamon roll with extra sauce. Oh, come on, somebody. Huh? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The fast was over. But Jesus was looking for something more than a biscuit. Oh, come on, somebody. See, that's what I want you to get. I want you to look for something more than you expect. Something more that's in your purview. Something more that's in your ability. I want you to reach for something that the devil say you can't have. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Huh? Jesus went through the temptation, and you know what the Bible said? The devil left him. Let me tell you something. Satan's job is to test you. Satan's job is to reveal your character. Satan's job is to reveal your desires. So once Jesus passed the temptation... It was like Satan going to God said, all right, he got it. Oh, come on, somebody. He passed the test. And then he opened up the book and said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. How many of y'all been through enough to get the anointing? Come on, somebody. Now look at this. Now look at this. And, and, and I, was, I was hoping y'all would catch this while I was reading it. The Spirit of the Lord, I'm in verse number 18, is upon me because he has anointed me to. To. He has anointed me to. My anointing is focused. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. I'm not just here preaching, but my anointing is focused. It is laser beamed. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has laser beamed me to preach to the poor. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. Those that don't have nothing. Those that, 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 that have just felt like, well, this is where I'm going to be the rest of my life. But my anointing is laser beam. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to. To heal. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. Now, notice this, that the anointing wasn't just in general. The anointing was to specific people because you might be poor. You might be brokenhearted. Oh, I wish I had a church up in here. But when Jesus comes your way, oh, his anointing becomes laser focused. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's why when the lady with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, the Bible said that that virtue came out. Come here, brother Scott. Come here, brother Scott. Come here. Just, just touch the hem. Yeah, that's all, that's all she did. She didn't grab it. 
She just, she just. Yeah. Why? Because the anointing is focused to the broken heart. Come on, somebody. He has sent me. He has sent me. Lord, let me. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. So when Jesus saw somebody captive, the anointing falls. Oh, come on, somebody. That's why he could say, Lazarus. Come on, somebody. Huh? The anointing is focused. God focused his anointing to you because all of us fit in one of these categories. Come on, somebody. Look at this. Recovering of sight too. So when Jesus saw a blind person, the anointing was... Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Huh? The anointing was focused. That's why he could tell a blind man that never seen water, go walk to a pool. Come on, somebody. He didn't know how to get there. But when the anointing comes, when the Spirit of God comes in, when the saints begin to pray, and the Lord, blind man walked to a pool he never saw in his life with spit and dirt in his eyes. See what God does? God will put you in a miraculous situation. God will put you in a situation to where it looks like it's worse. I came to you blind and you spit in the ground and you washed it in my eyes. You made it worse, but you told me to wash. But there was something about your word. I wasn't mad that you put spit in my eye. I started looking for a poop. Y'all don't hear me. I started to find. I would I would have walked up to somebody with that with that dirt spit in my eyes and said, Do you know where the pool of Bethesda is? Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Hey! Turn right. You walk right in. Walked in and washed his eyes. Came back and said, I can see. They said, who gave you your sight? They said, he said, I don't know, because I was blind at my first initiation. But now I can see. <laughs> to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So now my focus is on preaching, but not to the poor. It's to the year. Oh, it's to the time. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's the time we're living in. I'm preaching to the time. Y'all don't hear me. The Bible said, redeem the time for the days are evil. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to preach to the time. And I'm going to tell my time, you will be blessed. I don't know when I'm going to die. But when I die, they're going to say Newton surely was blessed. Because I'm preaching to my time. Y'all don't hear me. Tell your time, I'm blessed. Let me let me let me try to finish this up. I'm not rooting tooting, I guess, today. The Bible said that when he 
he read it. Everybody was looking at it. When I used to be able to preach real good, come on somebody. Sometime you'll give up, get up and just give your, your title and folk will start shouting. Woo, you remember that? You remember those days? We don't have those days no more. Come on, somebody. We done changed. Corona done messed us up. We done got quiet. We want to go home early. Come on, somebody. Y'all better learn to praise him like we used to. Because that's the test. This is a shaking. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And everything that's not nailed down is going to fall off. So if you truly belong to him, you better praise him like you used to. And never let anybody diminish your praise to just some emotional experience. I'm not shouting just because I... I feel it. I'm shouting because I recognize that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, let me tell you something. I don't have to be in church to shout. My wife will tell you I'll shout in the living room. I'll shout in the kitchen. I'll shout in the bathtub. I'll shout in the car cause he been that good to me come on somebody and what I'm doing is not a game it's real he spoke to me he told me to love me he told me he'll heal me he told me he'll bless me and it's been since I was 17, 58 years now, that was, I don't know how many years that is, but he's kept me every day. He made a way out of no way. When I gave up on him, he didn't give up on me. He kept on blessing me. And I, I respect the anointing on my life because God had to do it. God had to do it. God. He had to do it. Now look at this. I didn't even get halfway through this message. Praise our God. They said... In this, the boy, uh, Joseph's boy. But what you got to understand, that when Jesus went into the temple, he went into the temple at Nazareth. Nazareth was a nasty place. That's why the preacher said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But here comes Jesus. And not only did he come out of a nasty place, he went back into a nasty place to read the word and reveal who he is. God ain't going to wait till you get to church to show you that you're blessed. He going to bless you in a nasty place. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I don't want to be here, but I'm here. So anyway, you bless me, Lord. Lord, I wish I was at refuge. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. I know I'm not worthy. I know I'm not clean. I know I'm undeserving. But I need your anointing to change my life. Let me get to where I'm going. Let me get to where I'm going. 
They were all excited because Jesus read the scripture. But he told them in a little while, you're going to say, physician, heal yourself. You're going to leave me holding the back. You're going to leave me in a bad place. You're going to leave me on a cross. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, Lord. But here's what God did. He went back to the Old Testament. And he said, don't you remember the, when Elijah was walking the earth? There were all type of widows that needed help. Y'all don't hear me. But only one, read it for yourself. Only one got delivered under the time of Elijah. There were a lot of lepers. But only one named Naaman got delivered y'all don't hear me just because the anointing is available it don't mean everybody is going to receive it but I dare you tell God I'm the one I know there's a lot of folk in my condition. There's a lot of folk with my debility. But I know there's healing available. If they don't want it, I want it. Tell God I'm the one. Yeah. 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 Lord, if you can't give anybody else local news, I'm the one. Oh, come on, somebody. Huh? Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Give me a word that'll bring new life. Oh, God. I don't care who's not listening, Jesus. I'm listening. I'm the one. You can speak to me. You know what the Holy Ghost is? The Bible says it is an unction. Whoop. It's an uplifting. Come on, somebody. You don't need an unction until you're discouraged. You don't need an unction until you feel like all is lost. But the thing is with you, you've been called. Oh, <sighs> maybe I told you, maybe this is over your head. You've been called. So anytime you feel like quitting, Jeremiah wasn't unique. That's how God works. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. I can't quit. I can't stop. I've been anointed. Tell your neighbor, I respect my anointing. My anointing is focus. It's focus. It's focus. It's focus to bless you. Oh, come on, somebody. It's focus to bring healing in your mind, 
because your mind been going through. It's one thing to suffer in your body, but it's totally different to suffer in your mind. Oh, come on, somebody. When you give up on yourself, when you're ready to quit and it makes sense to give up, you need God to touch your mind. Your body will respond once he touches your mind. I ain't going to get too much in my business, but there have been times when I didn't want to get up off the couch. Oh, come on, somebody. And it took the Holy Ghost to zap me. <laughs> Boy, you know you better than that. You got more strength than that. You got more power than that. Get up. Moses told God, just kill me right now. Just, just let me die. Elijah told God, God, I give up. Just, just come on, just let me die. I told God, let me just walk out in front of a bus. Oh, come on, somebody. Then the Holy Ghost, shh. Zapped. Oh, I wish I had some. It was, it was like the movie where I said Shazam. Come on, somebody. God made me something that I didn't think I could be. I like superheroes. <laughs> The Bible said once the anointing comes on you, it destroys the yoke. The best way I can explain that is like the Hulk. The Hulk told him, you won't like me when I get mad. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm nice, easy, I'm weak, you can push me around. Just don't make me mad. Once the anointing comes on you, oh, come on, somebody. Satan looking at you like, who's that? That's, that's not who I tripped. That's not who I hurt. That's not who I lied on. They look big and green. Come on, somebody. Respect. The anointing. I thank God for all my brothers, my preacher and deacon brothers. I want to pray for y'all this morning. I want to pray. How many deacons I got in here? How many elders? You're an elder? You're a minister? Raise your hand. I want you to. Who you think I'm talking to? I want to pray for y'all. Because your anointing needs to be focused. He has sent me to to he sent me to. What has God sent you to? To. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all might work together, but not all of y'all are sent to the same thing. Y'all not sent to the same people. But God has focused you. Say, I'm focused. I'm focused. Say it again. 
He sent me to something. The only person who could tell them where Jesus was sent to was Jesus. Because he had to know it first. Something, Brother Neely, God's going to show you first. And once he shows you, you're going to change. And they're going to say, what's wrong with Brother Neely? He got focused. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. 